You may think you've seen this watch before, but you haven't. This is the new Tag Heuer Monaco Special Edition that's just been launched. And if it looks familiar to you, congratulations. You're clearly someone who knows your watchmaking history. Let's take you through it. Hello, World Tempest family, and thanks for joining us for another session with the World Tempest Showcase. If you know anything about watches and pop culture, you'll know that the Hoya Monaco chronograph stampeded into silver screen fame when Steve McQueen wore it in his 1971 film Le Mans. Uh, while the McQueen model, steel case, blue dial, red accents, and most notably the left side crown and the right side pushes, remains the most iconic and recognizable in the Monaco collection, 1974 saw the introduction of an all black model that would go on to achieve cult status in the minds of collectors. This was the Monaco Dark Lord, of which only a few were made. Um, I think between 1 and 200, according to Jack Hoyer, making it seriously rare. Uh, if you find one in good condition at a reasonable price, either thank your lucky stars or do a background check on the guy who's trying to sell it to you. Uh, the Monaco Dark Lord was almost the first watches to experiment with PVD coatings. So it was really a pioneer in its field. And the black surface treatment wasn't super robust at the time. But this experience allowed Hoyer to really come to grips with PVD technology, uh, PVD standing for physical vapor deposition. Uh, a couple of years after the Dark Lord, Hoyer officially introduced their first PVD coated pieces in their catalog. Today, we have the new Tag Hoyer Monaco Special Edition with us, and you can definitely see the lineage here. Taking note in particular of the right side crown, just like the 1974 Dark Lord. The case in titanium is coated with DLC, which stands for diamond-like carbon, meaning it is formed of carbon atoms in a way that makes it very hard and resistant, like diamond, but without the brittleness or regular crystalline structure that you see in gem-quality diamond. Now, people tend to think that DLC is superior to PVD without realizing that DLC is a material, and PVD is a technique. DLC is actually applied using a form of PVD, so it doesn't really make any sense to say that one is better or worse than the other. That's like saying like potatoes are better than boiling. One's an ingredient and the other one's a cooking method. There's literally nothing to compare. I want to look a little closer at the dial where you have a number of interesting features. My favourite being the texture at the outer edges. This is a sandblasted finish but it's deliberately done in a slightly uneven way uh, to reflect the surface of a racetrack. You have this rugged texture in contrast with the rose gold plated hands and markers. It's a great parallel for how the Formula 1 Grand Prix in Monaco is this mix of high octane, high risk sporting action in an incredibly glamorous and luxurious environment. In terms of indications, we have of course the hours and minutes and at six o'clock, there we have the small seconds indication with a little window for the date. All the chronograph hands are in red, so we have the central chronograph seconds, 30 minute totalizer at three o'clock, and the hour totalizer over on this side. We've had a couple of drawbacks to the Monaco Dark Lord recently, in recent years. Um, there was the collaboration between Tag Heuer and Bamford Watch Department in 2018. Uh, there was last year's only watch carbon Monaco, but those were in forged carbon fiber and you don't really have the same kind of look. Uh, now, in the early days of the Bamford watch department, George Bamford first made his work known by his extensive use of black PVD coatings, and you can find examples of Tag Heuer Monaco watches he did with black PVD treatment, though you can't really just go into a Tag Heuer boutique and buy one of those. On to the movement. Inside this watch, we have the manufacturer chronograph caliber Hoyer 02, which, as you can see, is an automatic winding movement from the great little unidirectional rotor over here. One of the traditional prestige marks of a chronograph is the use of a column wheel to control the chronograph status. And I want to point it out right here. It's a bit small, but we can zoom in no problem. 
Now I'm just going to point it out as well. It's this part here, that's the column wheel. And you'll see that when I hit the chronograph start stop pusher, the column wheel rotates to switch between different chronograph operations. Finally, I want to talk a little about how it fits on the wrist. The thing I really like about Tag Heuer straps is how adjustable they are. Uh, you don't have the conventional buckle with the pin that you lock in place with punched holes. This is more of a sliding system that you can calibrate very precisely to fit your wrist. It goes in, you pull it out. This one's still a bit too big for me, but that's just a matter of getting the smallest strap size. The watch is available immediately at all Tag Heuer boutiques and retails at the cost of 8,000 Swiss francs. Uh, and there you have it, the new Tag Heuer Monaco Special Edition presented on the occasion of the 2022 Monaco Formula One Grand Prix. Thanks for being with us today. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel uh, if you'd like to see more content like this. And I'll see you all again really soon. Bye.